Welcome back to the channel, I'm Damo. I'm Nick. And today we've got the fight night at the Joe. This is between Detroit Red Wings and Colorado Avalanche, 1997 I think. Yeah, it was a poll winner wasn't it? Not a poll winner, did well in a poll, been mentioned a lot. We've done obviously quite a few fight videos and this one's been coming up a lot in the comments. It's oh, one okay. that we have to check out. This one's actually called Birth of the Rivalry, so it sounds like there's quite a in-depth battle going on between maybe yeah. Red Wings and Avalanche outside of just this because this I'm imagining this is an actual event that's happened yeah I, I don't know anything about the fight night of the Joe but I'm looking forward to finding out what is the Joe I don't know no I don't actually know what is the Joe well, I think we're about to find out yeah we probably are about to find out but yeah we hope you enjoy it let's jump straight into it yeah it was 1997 Took a swipe and Igor Larionov. And it isn't often. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. That was off the ground. It came out of nowhere. Oh, wow. Wow. He's taken some shots. Lemieux was hammered by Darren McCarty, and he is being helped. Not actually hammered. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, he is busted up. Who's that? Lem. What's his name? No. Since the hit on Chris Draper. And look at Darren McCarty. And now the Red Wings with the fresher legs. And it is Ooh. Over time. Winner. McCaffrey. I think <laughs> I swear McCaffrey was the one that was dishing out a load of those punches. And don't you know he comes back out on top. Big Mac does the job in the end. Vernon gets his 300, gets in a major Donnie Brook. That probably hasn't happened more than a couple of times he had counted on one hand in his career and the Red Wings finally beat Colorado not many people remember specific dates when it comes to regular season contests but mention the night of March 26th 1997 and every Red Wings fan knows exactly what happened with all the Stanley Cup wins and overtime thrillers to choose from you the fans Pick this contest as your favorite, and it's easy to see why. This one has a little bit of everything. Rivalry, oh, okay. Retribution, and a dramatic overtime. It cemented the Red Wings and the Avalanche as arch enemies and set the stage for battles that would be fought for years to come. Darren McCarty, the hero on this night, calls this game his favorite memory. So sit back and enjoy the Red Wings showdown with a Colorado Avalanche. It was a perfect storm. Uh, you you go back I, to me to this day. That's hockey 101. That game. You kind of knew it was going to be a, a, a big night that night. It was, you know the anticipation that something was going to happen was obviously very high. I just remember you could tell it was going to happen. You can't never like set it up and plan it, but it just kind of things aligned. Stars aligned on. This is it. The takeout. Bang. Yeah, that was nuts. <clears throat> That was a good hit. Yeah, that caught him off guard, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. <clears throat> Lemieux. That's him. Yeah, he got beaten. Adam Foot grabs me. He's strong. He grabs my arms and I'm sort of tied up. I'm seeing Lemieux through the through the crowd. And Shannon comes by and he double whacks his arms. And as he does that, I escape and I pop out and I see Lemieux coming in and I look him straight in the eye. And it wasn't a sucker punch, because that's from behind. It was a cold cock. There's a difference. And he said after we talked that, that that's the hardest he ever been. He didn't oh. he was, uh, What's a cold cock? <clears throat> uh, I'm guessing it's a hit from the side. I don't know. 
He definitely didn't see that coming. I don't know if I'd no. call it a sucker punch, but yeah, he, yeah, sucker punch he, he get definitely the caught him caught him cold. Way off. My wife called cold, cold, cold. Maybe cold. caught him cold. Yeah, okay. he, he was not aware of it at all. Yeah, but yeah, no, we, yeah, this is uh, looking like a massive brawl. This one, definitely. But it was, I mean, it was, a, it, it was unbelievable, you know, to, to, to kind of watch and see it, see how it happened. And, and, you know, the fans were, you know, so into it. I mean, they, you know, that was as loud as, you know, this building was just absolutely rocking. I remember Shani flying over top of it, like, wow, like the, that big collision. And, and then Lemieux wanted to fight, didn't want to fight, didn't want to fight, didn't want to. And, and then I remember Vernie coming out because, you know, Vernie was, you know, back then the goalies were in the best of shape. So I'm like, there's no way he's going to last this. And he came out, throwing his gloves off, and surprisingly, to his credit, did very well. And I thought, well, Wah's a big guy, and Vernie's not that big, but Vernie did good. And Vernie and Wah go at it, and Shani and Foot go. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was unbelievable. And, you know, we've, you know, we've, no bones about it. We, we hated each other. You know, there's, there was no doubt about that. There was, a, there was pure hatred in, in that rivalry. We needed to win that hockey game for a lot of reasons. And I think uh, the way we won it and the way that, that game played itself out was, uh, was a huge rallying point for, for our hockey team. Um, you know, just, you know, with, with the brawls, the way everyone stood up for each other. You know, and then, you know, after the game, I mean, it was just, you know, coming into that locker room, that was probably the most celebrated win in a regular season that, that we had, just the way that it all played out. And then we're all in the dressing room. We're they mentioned him earlier, that Chris Draper, the okay. guy who was just speaking there. They said something about <clears throat> 300 and something days since the hit on Draper. So I don't know oh, if that was something else maybe. that possibly, because remember, we know from the unwritten rules that yeah, apparently they they'll, they'll never they'll forget and they'll get yeah, you. I can imagine it was the most celebrated they've been because uh, imagine you get into that fight you get cut up and then you go on to lose the match. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's going to be really bad for morale. And Definitely. Yeah, I bet they were so pumped at the end. Watching the video Over time too. Time, mm. the fights and the, you know, had the law and in the air and uh, we're laughing our heads off. Um, little moments like that throughout the year what builds the team. I remember, I did not know how close Patrick was. Like he could have like breathed on my back of my neck he was so close I didn't know that I was so dying yeah he is going for him isn't he yeah you know it's not about me it's about us and that's what it was about and that was the night that we didn't really realize it but it I think that it brought this whole Red Wing nation together like it's gonna be okay <laughs> Oh, oh, naughty. Yeah. And look who came all the way out to try to help Patrick Wall. <clears throat> On the bottom band of the Stanley Cup, under the years 1996, 97, 98, 2001, and 2002, you'll find names etched in silver. Names like Iserman and Shanahan, Sackick and Forsberg, Wah and Osgood, Lemieux and McCarty. These names, forever engraved in sport's greatest prize, may look silver, but they were forged in blood. Here it is to Iserman. His shot is blocked before it got to Holstrom. Not going to get down defensively. Now Forsberg back in the field. Oh. Everybody knows about the games and the rivalries, as oh. especially when you walk through that door and you know it's Detroit, Colorado. Um, the players feel it, the fans feel it, both organizations obviously embraced it, and uh, you know there's some unbelievable hockey games against uh, against those two organizations. Five of seven cups between 1996 and 2002 were won either by the Detroit Red Wings or the Colorado Avalanche. Oh, oh wow, wow. Yeah. Teams with makes sense on the rivalry. Who dominated the Western Conference for nearly a decade. Not only was it a heated rivalry, 
but you're talking about uh, you know probably anywhere from 15 Hall of Famers that on, on both organizations. That's how good both teams were. I think none of us wanted to give an edge to the other. None of us wanted to, to go on a losing streak and say, hey, we got them now. We got the momentum. At times, it seemed the stakes were even higher than the Stanley Cup. But what made this blood feud so personal? How did a relocated team with no history of its own become the hated foe of one of the league's original six? The seeds were sown before the avalanche even existed. And were it not for two events, one of sports' greatest rivalries may never have existed. The Devils have won the Stanley Cup! In the so, am I right in thinking that the Detroit Avalanches were one of the original six? Who are the Detroit Avalanches? <laughs> Detroit Red Wings were one of the That's original I mean. six, and yeah. Colorado Avalanche. I don't know if Avalanche already existed, but by the sounds of it, they weren't in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit Avalanche. You're having fun. And the Colorado Red Wings. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm paying attention. Yeah, you're gonna, yeah. Everyone's going to be on you for it. Um, Colorado Avalanche, though, they were the defending champions of the Stanley Cup this yeah. year, right? It yeah. was them. I it couldn't remember them, yeah. if it was them Detroit or not. Lunch, yeah. But yeah, I think Detroit Red Wings were one of the original six, which doesn't surprise me because it seems like every sport we come across there's a Detroit team. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, one of the I don't actually know who the original six are though. To be fair, let's know. Yeah, that'd be really useful. The heavily favored Wings were swept by the New Jersey Devils. Claude Lemieux won the Conn Smythe Trophy as playoff MVP, and Detroit failed to bring Stanley home. But Lemieux wouldn't stay a hero in New Jersey. In the offseason, he leveraged his new star power into more money in a three-team trade that As you would. in Colorado, where a relocated Quebec Nordiques would play their first ever season as the Avalanche. Uh, I came from season, Quebec. Uh, okay. were again heavily favored for the Cup, and they unleashed the full power of a superstar team on December 2nd, 1995, against Patrick Waugh and the Montreal Canadiens. Sends it out to Federoff, scores! Here comes the hook. Have mercy on me. We barely played over half a hockey game. And this doesn't happen to that guy very often. The Wings scored nine goals on the six-time All-Star. Wow. The ball was finally pulled in the second period. It would be his last time on the ice as a Canadian. Patrick Waugh leaned over and spoke to the president of the Canadians organization. You can bet that's going to draw some questions. <laughs> I didn't look happy. Later, no. He was traded to Colorado and backstopped the Avalanche to the top of the Pacific Division. He looks like and a bit of a nutter, though. Yeah. With the Detroit Red Wings. It's a club that can be beat as good a season as they had last year. And this season, uh, you put that aside and you uh, take that series and you feel you can win. And uh, a lot can be achieved. Lemieux's abs took the first two games of the series. Not done yet. Oh, nice. That's nice. Really nice. Three things heated up. <coughs> oh, now that's a sucker punch. Yeah, that is. Yeah. An NHL review of Lemieux's punch led to his suspension for game four. Yeah. Colorado still <laughs> one game suspension for a sucker punch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's taking time to get used. It's taking time to get used to that because we're really not you, the smallest things <coughs> in sports that we see get quite lengthy suspensions. So, yeah, yeah sucker punch one day yeah, game suspension. A way to win. Facing elimination, Detroit stayed alive in Game Five, but it was Game oh, Six nice. that would go down in infamy. The other way to Draper. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah. Finally, got a chance to see Chris Draper's face, and I can't believe I shook Lemieux's hand after the game. Obviously, I'm uh, I'm the defendant here, and I'm obviously defending myself. But, uh, <laughs> but on the Draper, how is that defending? Uh, anything to it. He has no remorse whatsoever. If it was an accident, you know. If he said sorry, then you know maybe you could forgive. But I mean, uh, he not only didn't say sorry, he uh, his face looks swollen on our hockey club. Number thirty-three wouldn't return to the ice for over six months. 
Lemieux was wow. given a two-game suspension and fined a thousand dollars by the league. Wow. He won the Stanley Cup. That is, nah, that's nuts. That's pathetic. You yeah. cannot get a two-game suspension for that. He took that, someone out of the game for six months. That looked blatant to me. I've yeah. never seen that clip before in my life, and that you can never be certain, but no. it sounds like this guy's got a history. He sounds like a bit of Joey Barton of the yeah. hockey world. And if Joey Barton did that in in the English leagues, you would know exactly that he meant it just oh, because of what he's been like. We know, we know he's got, he's got a rap sheet, he's got yeah. a tally, and it seems like that's exactly what Lemieux, Lemieux? Um, me and pronunciations are just not strong. But yeah, it seems like that's exactly what he's got. He's got a past and he's got a mm, tendency a to reputation. do things. Yeah, a reputation yeah. for doing things like that. Oh, I think that's lenient. I know you don't. I know that it's kind of part of the sport and all of that. But that yeah. seems to take somebody out for six months, yeah. smashing their head from behind into the side for two games suspension. Yeah. Seems crazy to me. I mean, thankfully, it seems like the helmet did its job before coming off because yeah. it's probably saved him from having permanent damage. Yeah. So, yeah. A week and a half after that's Norway. Kind of started something. Oh, they went on to win it. Huge. The support that I got when I got hit from behind was <sighs> amazing. Uh, you know, from my teammates, uh, from the fans, the whole city seemed to, you know, kind of embrace that that moment. And um, you, you knew something was coming. That little toe out seemed to be what started it. He just gave him a little nudge with the bottom of his boot, and yeah. then that was it. Started everything that happened. The official goal of the 1996-97 Detroit Red Wings was to win the Stanley Cup. The unofficial benefit to doing so, revenge against the Colorado Avalanche and Claude Lemieux. That's why he got singled out. I mean, they're the uh, favorites this time. Uh, everyone's picked them to uh, repeat as Stanley Cup champs, and we're the underdog this time, so uh, it's a different season. Just before Christmas, the Wings got their first shot at the defending cup champs. But Lemieux was out with an injury. Still, tempers flared, and two Avalanche players left the game on stretchers. Oh, wow. The Avalanche defenseman Adam Foote, the Draper debt had been paid. Three months later, Lemieux and Draper were on the ice together for the first time since the hit. A bloodbath was guaranteed. Or was it? Yeah. A small scuffle early in the first was all that transpired. The Avs won 4-2. Taking seven of the last nine versus the wing. Oh, for legs, I think. He was quoted, show's over. Ten days later, the curtain rose on the next act of the Colorado Detroit drama. Anytime, you know, we played Colorado, you knew it was going to be a great game. You kind of yeah. didn't know what, uh, what was, what was going to happen. Larry on off and Forsberg away from the play. Peter Forsberg took a swipe and he took Larry on off. In what has become known as Fight Night at the Joe, the Wings had finally gotten their revenge on Lemieux and the Eagles. Darren McCarty gets his shots in at Claude Lemieux. And to think I felt sorry for him at first. Yeah. <laughs> you can see why uh, he took a hit like that. That block for Wah was crazy. Yeah. You know, but it's uh, all of a sudden, everything just kind of came to a head. 301 days since the hit on Chris Draper. Patrick 301. Yeah. Peter Forsberg bloodied up and Lemieux in the locker room. There were a total of nine fights that night and over 100 penalty minutes. Wow. <laughs> fights Crazy. Incredible hockey game. Larry on up. was the turning point in the season for us to to believe in ourselves to, that we you know we can beat them. Well, they kind of kind of had a number. Yeah, you know, they did. And they were, we we couldn't couldn't beat them. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, the way this this all breaks yeah. out, and then we win this game. And yeah. and obviously, I think uh, you know it was a big big confidence you know booster. Yeah. I think so that made it free all in the series. We were rolling, beat beat Detroit, and beat you guys in the playoff the year before. And then that night, I mean, it's it really affected us a lot in a way that we lost our focus that night. Even with the mental and physical blows that were dealt on fight night, the Avs still won the President's Trophy. 
and Detroit needed to do something they've never done to get their <coughs> shot at Stanley. Beat the Avs in the conference finals. They've got some players that really like physical play, and so do we. We've got some very skilled players, and so do we. I do expect that it's going to be very interesting. It's, it makes the sport uh, much better, uh, especially when you when you have two teams like ours that are are you know pretty even, and uh, two teams that don't like each other. So it's, it's going to be a great series. And a great series it was. Ooh. Game one was all Patrick Stop. Waugh. Oh, some sight. Reminder: <laughs> stopped 35 shots, keeping his team narrowly in the lead. How was that stayed out? <laughs> Do you hear that? Say 35, 35 shots. shots. Yeah, it's nuts. That is nuts. Where does that... Is that... How good is that? I'm guessing it's... I don't know. It might be a record. It might not. It's yeah. That, I feel like that's a higher number of saves than anything I saw in what I watched of the Stanley oh, yeah. Cup just gone by. Despite market, Bob having some incredible games yeah. in there. But, yeah. How how good is that? 35 yeah, saves. The highest? What is the highest? And where does that rank? The highest must be insane. Yeah. Yeah, if you find the highest, you have to <laughs> dig it out and watch it. Like yeah. 72 saves or something ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> game two, Detroit continued to pepper walk, this time breaking it. Hostilities uh, uh, seem to rise as the series goes on. You know, you, you play the game, you deal with whatever's <clears throat> happening. Smashed up his stick. Yeah. Game three went to Mike Vernon in the wings. Oh! What a save. <laughs> Despite trailing, Crazy. Wild was confident his team wanted it more. We haven't showed them nothing so far. And we haven't seen how bad they want to pay the price. Because I know my team and I know how bad oh, we want to win. Oh, and I know that tomorrow night we're, we're going to come out. And I know we're going to come out stronger than we ever done so far in that series. The Wings okay. proved him wrong in spectacular fashion. In a six nothing route, not oh. only was the confident Wa pulled, but 232 penalty minutes were assessed, and even the coach's <laughs> tempers boiled over. 200 that's double what happened on the fight night of the show. That's crazy. In game six, the wings outshot the abs 42 to 16, putting three past Wa. Detroit finally overcame the Avs and went on to win their first Stanley Cup in over 40 wow. years. The battle was won, but the war was far from over. I think for War to come out and give that real speech and then go down 6 0. Yeah. Oh, that's massive. That is massive. The fall of 1997, the score was by all accounts settled, but the bad blood between these two titans. Still ran hot. Rivalries start on the ice, but are well uh, are kept alive by the press, and uh, you guys have done a good job doing that. With his reputation <laughs> on the line, Claude Lemieux wasted no time in a rematch with Darren McCarty. Right off the faceoff, the gloves dropped, and the rivalry intensified. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. Right out of the get go. McCarty and, and Lemieux. Lemieux is going to fight this time. And this has been long overdue. He bumped me, and then I, uh, you know, said a few words to him, and and uh, I don't know whether it was taunting or, or uh, you know, just telling <laughs> Crazy. him how, how I felt about him. And uh, he you know, seems he like an out-and-out out fighter, though. <laughs> <laughs> By April, the Wings were once again one of the league's top teams, while the Avs were looking for some extra spark heading into the playoffs. The goal, the goal, goal goalies goal again. Having it, yeah. Seemed like he wanted to start something, maybe to redeem himself against Vernie, but I don't know. But I mean, fighting me, I don't think really proves anything for him. But it didn't <laughs> matter who was at the other side. You could get rattled in those games, and and I think after our fight, this is where I realized it was overboard. The fight with Osgood did not have the desired effect Wa was hoping for. His team failed to make it out of the first round of the playoffs. Detroit, on the other hand, did what Colorado could not and repeated as cup champs. 
the Detroit Red Wings have won the Stanley Cup for the second year in a row. In the 1999 playoffs, the Wings had everyone abuzz about a three-peat, something no one had done since the 80s. But once again, they'd have to get through the avalanche. There are things that are going to happen in the course of the game because it's the Red Wings avalanche. The stitches. Uh, yeah. Things that are going to happen. Yeah, he's got stitches. Well, because it was so focused on it, it looked like you almost didn't have another eyebrow, but now I can see it. And yeah. I was just tripping. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the Red Wings avalanche, it's, uh, it's going to be magnified even more. Game Oof. one shed first blood. Oh, that Straight was bad. Into... Uh, here's the hit right yeah. here. From behind as well. Yeah, game. What a big blow to the avalanche. Yeah, yeah I don't like that. Don't like that. Five minute penalty. Bloody hell. Going back. That was bad as well. Detroit took the first two games of the series, but the Avs would go on to win the oh. next four straight. Wow. Oh, did he get that? He yeah. did. That was great skill. It would end up being the last great series. To see all that, the eye contact between the two, yeah. two all, all the way down the line, but they're still shaking each other's hands. <laughs> I bet they just want to <laughs> knock each other's heads off. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, there's definitely a lot of hatred in this. Yeah, oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, the Red Wings didn't qualify for the Stanley Cup no. this time no. around, did they? So, yeah, I don't know if that was just a one-off or wonder, whether these two still go it. I was going to say, I wonder how, if the rivalry is still like alive yeah. and well, like... Or whether one of them is just a different level. I'd love to watch one of them. <laughs> these two being at a similar level and dominating through these years would have just made that well, it rivalry it. In, yeah, more, yeah. way more intense. Definitely. It's like Liverpool and Man City. Didn't yeah. really, we used to like each other because we hated Man United, both of us. Then both of us are competing all of a sudden and yeah. a few incidents happened develops. along the way and now we hate each other and Man United have almost been forgotten about a little bit because of how much we hate each other. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, um, it'd be great if it is still going. For the 99-2000 season, Claude Lemieux was sent back to the Devils, and the rivalry was never quite the same. At one point, it was, it was basically uh, who could beat the other team up, and we're getting to the point where it's uh, uh, high intensity, high, uh, high speed games, and, and uh, uh, everyone's more concerned about uh, scoring goals and fighting now, that's for sure. When oh, okay. Colorado in the 2000 conference they called a truce almost, it sounds like. Yeah, I think when Lemieux left, the intensity the sort of died down. Yeah. Offense couldn't find a oh. way past the suddenly impregnable Avalanche defense. And the Avalanche are going to eliminate the Red Wings again! Two straight years! Colorado took the series 4-1 to one and had bested Detroit three of the last four playoff series. Overtime winner. Hmm. There were many stories surrounding the 2001-2002 Red Wings. Stories from Luke Robitaille, Dominic Hasek, and Brett Hall, to Steve Eiserman, and a rookie named Pavel Dotsuk. Nice. Oh. Pavel Dotsuk. Been mentioned a lot. He has been mentioned a lot. Yeah. We will do a video on Pavel. So, Don't know why I paused to say that. <laughs> Things have changed between, uh, you know, what happened back then. Uh, you know, now uh, the bottom line is, is it's uh, two very talented hockey clubs going at one another. The rivalry has evolved into uh, it, to, to about the hockey and, uh, and about winning. When Detroit drew Colorado for the Western Conference Finals, the tone was different. We expected you're going to have to beat Colorado to, to get to the Cup and never doubted that really from day one. Even as the rivalry was okay. cooling, the 2002 Western Conference Finals brought out the best of both teams. Game one went to the wings. Empty net for a moment. Malby shot, save, what a rebound. Oh, good initial save. Yeah, got the rebound. Mm. McCaff McCarthy again. Game two and game three would both be decided in overtime. 3-3. Three, three. Oh. Overtime winner. How did that get through? 
the Avalanche took the next two, including the deciding goal in the series' third overtime game. Peter Forsberg has done it again, and Game 5 goes to Colorado. Game 6 was full of controversy, and the embers of the rivalry started to heat up. They are challenging Dominic oh. Pashik's stick. They're challenging. Something about Game 6. If that hmm. stick is illegal, and I think it's three and a half inches, it will be a power play for Colorado. If it is oh. legal. A legal the stick. Way around. Look at this, it's sliding all the way. Look, Dominic Hoshik, I know it's legal. That's right, I'm bad. Give it back to me. I measured it before the game. <laughs> Ah, oh, so the other team get the power play for the um, for the incorrect challenge. Yeah, yeah, that's quite that interesting. Way. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know they could even challenge for width of stick. No, that's the first on, I've on, ever on heard of that. And yeah. I've never, I mean, I'm guessing that it's happened before where yeah, it must have done for that to be implemented. Snuck in a slightly, um, a slightly bigger stick. Yeah, that's crazy. Really Any is. advantage, I guess. Was on the opposing goalie, Patrick Wah, so sure of himself. Got Still Patrick Wah. Oh. 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 That was an error, that. He dropped it out of the glove. Oh. Never recovered. And in the decisive game seven, Detroit scored seven goals and chased wow. Wah once again from the net. And the roof is caving in here on the Colorado Ads. Wow. Crazy. I was about to say they're scoring with every shot, but it's highlights. <laughs> oh, the blowout victory Crazy. essentially ended what was one of the greatest hockey rivalries of all time. That answers our question. Oh, so it's only a five-year rivalry. NHL hockey came down to two monolithic teams: the Detroit Red Wings and the Colorado Avalanche. The unstoppable force from Colorado who came into the league guns blazing, winning a cup, and making bitter enemies of Detroit the best team in the league. Each combatant was unwilling to cede ground, give up, or admit defeat. Blood was spilled. Revenge was taken. Champions were crowned. From 1996 to 2002, there was no greater rivalry. The stakes were higher. The hits were harder. Oh. The defeats more agonizing, and the victories extra sweet. It was hockey at its best with two of its finest teams. It was Red Wings. <laughs> That's just Avalanche. brilliant. It's crazy. Absolutely brilliant. You can still feel the rumble. What a crazy six years that was. Yeah, that was mad. I can't believe it lasted for such a short stint, actually. Oh, I know. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I like. I like the toughness of hockey. I like the. I do like some of the fighting and yeah, some of the action that provides. But I'll never get behind the sucker pushing the into shots. the bar the cheap shot into the barriers because mm. that catches you off guard. That can do neck damage, as we saw the guy's back face. Damage, was back. Yeah. yeah, it's just cowardly, and it's not in it's, for me. It's not in keeping with the toughness of everything else that goes no. with the sport. So that's my opinion. You might shoot me down for that in the comments and go. No, I think there'll be some that agree. What with is it? this? Um, no. They're, they're, they're tough men. Clown doing. They're tough men, tough sport, but mm. you've got to have some boundaries still. That's why they've got the unwritten rules. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're there for a reason. But yeah. no, it's a, it's a good opinion, that one. Yeah, no, that was, uh, yeah, the 1997, <laughs> that was a great, felt sorry for, uh, was it Lemoy? No, I'm getting Lemieux. him mixed up with one now, the goalkeeper, <laughs> <laughs> mixing them together. I think it's Lemieux. Lemieux, yeah. I felt sorry for him at first because I thought that was a bit of a punch out of nowhere, but it looks like um, maybe that was a, dish that was due let's he say he deserved that game yeah <laughs> but yeah we hope you enjoyed thank you for watching please do like subscribe and share it really does help us to grow the channel we'll see you on the next one